Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the shaft and tube assembly on your washer. On this style of washer, the shaft and tube assembly acts like a transmission, provides both the agitation and the spin functions on the washer. It's a really easy job to change. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the washer. We'll also need to pull it far enough forward that we can access the back panel because we'll need to remove some screws in the back of the console so that we can access all the components. So next we'll remove these three screws. And that will allow us to tilt the control panel forward and then we're just going to slide it sideways to disengage some locking tabs that hold it into the main top. We may need to wiggle it back and forth a bit to free it up and slide it facing from the back and we'll go towards your left and that will disengage these three hooks on the bottom. So just tilt that forward and then we'll go around and remove the front panel. So just slide that panel to the right, lift it off, and we'll just lay it loose there for now. Uh, next we'll take a stiff putty knife and we'll go in between the main top and the top of the front panel, just above the center of the edge of the lid opening, there's a spring clip. We'll slide our putty knife up on top of that clip and that will release the front panel. Just tilt it forward a bit and then lift it off the two mounting tabs on the bottom and we'll set that aside. Now next we'll remove two quarter inch hex head screws and secure brackets to hold the main top in place. And raise the lid and we'll lift that top up. Just pull it forward enough that we can access the lid switch. Now with the top panel just pull slightly forward and tilt it up. Just locate the locking tab that holds that lid switch in place. Just depress that either with your fingers or a screwdriver, and then pop it up through. And then drop it down through the hole. You can then remove the main top. Now next you may wish to remove the agitator. So we're basically going to reach in on both sides of that and pull straight up on it. Normally they're on there fairly snug. We'll put some gloves on that gives us a good grip. Get your hands in underneath the edge of the agitator, 180 degrees opposite each other, and then pull up. Just pull it off and set that aside. Now next we'll remove the retaining bolt for the agitator drive block. So just remove that 7 16 bolt that secures the agitator drive block. Once you break it free, it should come out pretty easy. And we can lift that off and set it aside. Now before we go any further, we'll remove the control panel and the backyard here to get those out of the way. So just pull the air pressure air dome tube off of the pressure switch. Then next we're going to remove four screws that secure this mounting bracket for the water valve and water inlet and that also holds the back panel in place and the end caps. You may also wish to remove the ground screw that will allow us a little more movement with the wire harness. So the end caps are attached to this back panel, so you can just tilt those forward, lift them off, because they will come off anyways. Just set those aside. And we'll take the back panel, the control panel, and that support for the water inlet, and just let them hang out over the side of the tub. Now next we'll remove the 5 16 screws and large washers that secure the tub straps. And just lift the tub straps off of the odor tub tub cover. Do the same on the opposite side. Now 
with those tucked out of the way, we'll next need to remove that tub cover. And it's held to the odor tub, little tabs all the way around the perimeter. Now to remove that odor tub cover, we need to release these tabs that go all the way around the top of the tub. We simply just press down a little bit on that tub cover while lifting out on the tab to clear that little tab on the outer tub and then lift it off. Just go all the way around until you release all of them and then we can lift the tub cover completely off the tub. Well, next we'll need to remove the tub nut. So using a spanner wrench. Now it is a left hand thread on that tub nut. So we're going to turn it clockwise from the top to loosen it. Now with the tub nut removed, we can then lift the tub out. Just lift that inner tub completely out of the washer and set it aside. We we'll also have to remove the wire harnesses from the motor. So we'll release the locking tabs, pull the plugs away. And the blue black two wire one can stay on there. We we'll also have to get that harness out of the way. And it's held in place with three little wire ties that have a little clip on them that is mounted onto the motor frame as well as the housing. So using a pair of needle nose pliers, we're just going to squeeze those the plastic tabs together and that will allow us to remove them. I also want to take the screw root for the ground wire. And if you have difficulty accessing the clip on that one that mounts where the suspension is, you can wait until you've taken the suspension rod out of the way first. So now our next step will be to, first of all, we'll pull that air dome tube off of the outer tub and just let it hang there. And then we need to release the tub from the suspension rod holders. So you need either a broom handle or an object that's at least two to three feet long so that we can pop those rear ones out easily. Now to remove the four suspension rods, basically we're going to remove the weight off of them by lifting up on the outer tub. And then using a broom handle or an object similar to that, we're gonna knock this little bushing down through that metal piece. Should knock that loose. You can pull the suspension out of the mount. So do the same on all four corners. And let the whole assembly sit on the base. Do the same in the rear corners. And if you still have that one clip remaining, we'll release that. And then just tuck that harness out of the way. Now next we'll need to remove the tub to pump hose and there may be some water in it so you'll want to have an old towel or something there to collect that. But we'll use a pair of pliers and we're just going to squeeze that clamp, whichever one is easier to get at, either at the back of the pump or the bottom of the tub. Slide the clamp up onto the hose and then remove the hose. So just reach in with the pliers, squeeze the clamp together. And slide that clamp and hose completely off the pump. Now our next step will be to remove the complete assembly from the cabinet. So basically we're going to tilt it back, pull forward on the motor end and lift it out of the cabinet. So just lift up on the whole assembly, tilt it back while pulling it forward through the cabinet. And now we can replace the part. Now with the tub out where we can work on it, our next step will be to 
Just clean this area off with a wire brush if there's any corrosion built up there. So you need to pull that split ring off of there and it's a little easier if it's a nice smooth surface to slide on. Now that we've cleaned up the center of that outer tub, we can now turn the complete tub assembly upside down to access the component. So with the tub turned upside down, our next step will be to remove the belt. So just take a flat blade screwdriver, slide it between the belt and the pulley, and then just rotate it and slide the belt off. And next we'll need to remove the retaining nut for the large pulley. Use either a three-quarter socket or an adjustable wrench. And if it's on there fairly snug, take a flat blade screwdriver, slide it through one of the holes in that housing keep the pulley from turning. Until you break it free. Remove the nut. You may need to tap that pulley just a bit to get it to release from the shaft. Don't use anything too hard, it is a cast pulley and you don't want to damage it. If need be, you can win from me, roll and pry it off. And then just set that aside. Now next we'll need to remove the bolts that secure that tube assembly to the housing. There are three of them on the bottom side and then one underneath. So we'll begin by loosening the three that we have access to and then remove them. And set those aside. Now next we'll need to remove the four bolts that secure that whole housing to the outer tub as well as we'll need to cut this zip tie that secures the overflow tube to one leg on that housing. So just loosen the bolts. And then remove them. removed, we'll next lift that whole assembly, including the motor, off of the outer tub. So you'll need to support that outer tub so we can pull the shaft up through the bearing. Now with it removed, you should inspect that bearing if it looks corroded or worn, you'll want to replace that. If it looks fine, we're simply going to turn that assembly upright. So next we'll remove that remaining 3 8 bolt on the bottom side. And we'll also need to remove that last wire tie clip. using needle nose pliers, just squeeze the tabs together and pull it up through. So with the harness removed, you can then remove the old tube assembly and if the bearing washer was stuck on your old one, remember to keep that aside, you will need it for the new one. Just lift it out of the housing and discard it and place the new one in position making sure that we have the harness pointed in the right direction. Also that these two bolts come up from the bottom will fit into those two slots to help align it. So it should lay flush. We'll 
Begin by reinstalling one of the bolts. Now the manufacturer recommends that you tighten these bolts to 90 inch pounds. So you'll need to secure a torque wrench and tighten them accordingly. Next, we'll insert that wire tie tab into the hole in the frame next to the motor. We're now ready to flip the unit over and set it back on the outer top. Remember to set the bearing washer on top of the bearing. Line up the shaft through the hole. And lower it down into position. So rotate that whole assembly, the bolt holes line up for the tub, and we'll install those next. Make sure they're tight. Now, once we have all four of those bolts secure, we can then install the remaining three bolts for the tube assembly. And again, we'll secure those with the torque wrench. Next, we're ready to reinstall the drive pulley. When installing the pulley, we want to make sure that the flush side is facing up. Lower it on, make sure it lines up with the cogs on that tube assembly. And reinstall the nut. And again, we'll use a screwdriver to secure that pulley. It's tight. We'll lay the belt on the motor pulley. Make sure it fits below that flange on the end of the motor shaft so that all the grooves fit onto the motor pulley. Just rotate it around until the belt comes up tight and then keeping some tension on that we're going to rotate that pulley you probably find that it will ride up on that motor pulley so you'll need to push it down into place and just rotate it until it is centered on the motor pulley and it should be just about the center of the large driven pulley. Next we'll reattach that overflow tube to one leg on that assembly. Next we'll need to secure that overflow tube to that leg of the assembly. So feed a zip tie through that hole and then just snug it up. So before we put the tub in place, we can reattach the 
harness connector for the tube assembly. Make sure it's in place. Now we're ready to put the whole assembly back into the washer. Now to put the tub back in the washer, we're going to stand it upright. And we'll begin by tilting the bottom of it in first. Just set it roughly in position. Our next step will be to hang the tub and motor assembly on the suspension arms. So basically we're going to lift that tub up and slide those suspension arms into the metal frames and pull up on them to lock the plastic grommets in place. So just make sure that the grommet is loose and laying at the bottom of the suspension arm. Line up that grommet in the opening and pull it so it snaps into place. And then we'll go to the back of the cabinet and do the two rear corners. Just verify that all four suspension arms are locked in place. And now we're ready to reconnect some wire harnesses and the air dome tube. So we'll begin by inserting those pins on the wire ties into the openings on the frame. And the second one by the ground wire. And then the last one down in front of the motor those all lock in place. We install the harnesses to the motor, making sure that the locking tabs engage. And then reinstall the ground wire screw. The harness is still attached to the suspension rod. And on the opposite side, we'll make sure that we get the air dome tube fitted onto the outside of the tub and that it's clipped to the left side suspension rod. Now next we'll reconnect the tub to pump hose. So we'll take that hose and you'll note that there's a couple of notches on that hose end that will line up with some ribs on the inlet to the pump. Slide the hose on. You may need to move the clamp back further on the hose to give you some more room. Make sure it's pushed firmly onto the pump. Line the clamp up. Now we can move to the inside of the tub. Now our next step will be to put the tub seal in place. There's a friction fit on the outside of this tub seal against the perimeter of that hub on the outer tub. And it's a fairly snug fit, so you may want to put just a thin film of um, water or maybe some dishwashing liquid, just a very thin film of it to help install that. Make sure the shaft is clean so that we don't damage the inside of that seal. And then press it into the tub. 
Now if it's difficult to get that in that hub on the outer tub, just take a blunt instrument like a wooden handle on a hammer and just tap it on the outside edge. A little bit at a time, all the way around the perimeter. Seat it properly, it should be flush all the way around. And then just carefully wipe the portion of the shaft where that seal slid over in case there's any excess grease from the seal that got left behind. Next, we'll put the square centered washer in place. And then the split ring with the tapered end facing up. all the way down and then we'll put the inner basket in place next we'll install the tub nut and remember it's a left hand thread so when facing it from above we're going to turn it counterclockwise to tighten it and just move that inner basket back and forth a bit to help center it and then with our spanner wrench, we'll tighten that up. Next, we'll install the agitator drive block. Slide the splines down over the top of that shaft. Reinstall the bolt. And we'll tighten it. We can now reinstall the agitator. Just line up the splines on the inside of that agitator with the grooves on the side of the agitator drive block. And then pop it into place. Well, next we'll put the tub cover on. Now when installing the tub cover, you'll note that there are some tabs that will fit over the hooks on the outer tub. And there are also a couple of indicator tabs that need to line up with some double tabs on the outside of the tub. So we'll position it so that the bleach inlet is in the left front corner. And then before we snap that into place, we'll line up the indicator tabs. And we also need to make sure that all of the tabs go out over the outer tub. lined up and then just push down on that tub cover until the locking tabs engage. You should hear them all pop into place but just do a visual inspection to make sure that they are all engaged. Next we'll we install the tub dampening straps. So fit them over the projections on the outer tub cover. And then secure them with the 516 screws with the Laird's washers. And if any of these straps are damaged or cracked, you'll need to replace those. And now we're ready to put the console and housing back into position. So just rotate the housing back around, put the console aside for now. Make sure that we fit that air dome tube up through that oval opening. Then take the end caps and line those up. Make sure they're engaged in the top frame. Make sure both hooks fit into the square openings. And that support bracket will sit on top of them. Well, next we'll take the back panel and we'll make sure that the tabs on the back panel will slide underneath the metal tabs on that support bracket. And then we'll also need to engage the end caps as well. Only 
the middle tab on the back panel goes on the inside of the end cap. And just make sure that the square opening on that tab on the back panel engages the little raised portion on that end cap. And that'll help hold it in position. Now we're ready to reinstall some screws. We'll start with the ones that hold the back panel in place. These are the two that go through the support bracket and the end cap. Next we'll need to secure that ground wire or ground wires. And that is a machine thread type screw the ground wires. And just lift the console back a bit so that we can reconnect the air dome tube. Make sure it's fully inserted onto the pressure switch. And we have no kinks. Now when installing the main top, we need to make sure that these two slotted openings will fit over the two tabs that are on the frame around the top of the cabinet. So on the rear, and one in the front. Center it side to side. Position it over top of those openings. Move the console out of the way. And making sure that it's pressed down flush with the top of the cabinet. Push it back to lock it in place. And then tilt the console back up. And we're going to engage these three tabs with the three slotted openings along the back of the main top. Push it to the left and then allow it to tilt back. We'll then secure that console to the back panel with the three quarter inch hex head screws. Now next we'll need to reinstall that lid switch. So make sure that the side that has the spring type clip on it faces towards the back of the washer. And we're just gonna fit that up through the opening We'll see a little slot on the front side that will slide it down into place, push it forward, and then snap it into place. We'll then secure the top panel to the cabinet with two screws through the front. So just make sure that back panel is tucked in underneath the top edge of the console, that the screw holes line up, and then just install them and tighten them securely. So just make sure the Brackets line up with the holes in the cabinet and install the two screws. Now when installing the front panel, what we want to do is make sure that we line up those slotted openings in the bottom of the panel with the hooks on the base frame. We also have four plastic studs on the front edge of that cabinet that need to line up with four round holes in the front panel. And we also have a single metal locating pin on the right hand side of the panel that needs to engage this clip on the cabinet. The spring clips that are located on the bottom of the main top will engage these slotted openings in the top of the front panel to lock it in place. So make sure both bottom tabs are engaged. The plastic pins line up. And then just press in on the top so that the spring clips will lock in place. We're now ready to reconnect our hoses and the power and our repair is complete.